Hello everyone, Jess Chef here, back at you with another G-Shock G-Vlog video. Today I'm gonna fulfill one of the most requested disassembly video on the channel and that is for this GW-94 series range man model. So, let's get started. I just removed all four screws on the side of this range man and I just want to quickly point out one more thing about this watch behind the design of this lug part alone. First of all, it just only locked with screw bar like this, stainless steel metal, really solid one. And the construction of this adapter is actually built to fully integrate it with the hard case and also the bezel as well. So if you look really closely, everything will fill in every single gap in there so when i add this strap in there it will lock it into place i didn't even need the screw to lock it into place and as you guys could already see it is locked over here and it was fully covered with this resin hard case over there and this resin hard case is fully hardened even further with the resin part on the uh, on top one two three four and five layers of protection just to guard the lock part alone and not just that i do read uh, some uh, forums back a couple of years ago where people complains about the weak part in this part of this look but if you really think about it there aren't any gap at all because this band actually fills in the gap and fully strengthen the look part of the watch and not just that keep in mind this is not a new design at all i have a vintage watch with me it was released 20 years ago and check this out guys it does feature a similar look construction and if you don't believe me i could just literally plug this vintage modman model strap in here and it will fit just fine there you go even though it didn't look as good right but i could add in the screw bar in there and screwed it into place and there you go fits perfectly fine so this design is actually really future proof and proven to be long lasting ever since this one was released way back 20 years ago probably more than that already so that is one thing that i learned about the range man the design is really really incredible and proven to be long lasting unless you tampered and change anything at all that's going on down here and then probably might end up breaking the watch the watch on its own is already perfect in my opinion all right before I proceed with more let's have a look at this a buckle which is just locked with a simple spring bar so nothing much to see here and this is the watch banner keeper and that is how you remove it just in case you would prefer to have a resin one instead so this is the watch bezel which also again was locked with this screw bar and nothing else so since i already removed all four of them i could just force this bezel out from this side first like so it is really elastic but at the same time really strong so you don't have to worry about breaking this part at all especially it is in good condition like this one so be very careful still so it won't stuck to any place else and remove it carefully from this side of the watch and it should came out like that so this is how the resin bezel looks like there you go pretty stiff actually if you hold it and you'll see this metal pin on top being placed or locked with that type of construction i'm not sure you guys can see it but basically it's just clip in there if you want to remove this you could remove it from the front by prying it out or just push it from the back really really strongly so there you go this part not gonna come out anytime soon at all so this is the hard case in black full black model and you can see that the glass sits really nicely into the hard case but you'll see the one that i'm holding right now have some sort of screen protector on top so that is something that people do if i'm not mistaken you can buy the screen protector from yahoo japan auction actually because the actual glass is just mineral so i could understand why people would decide to add a screen protector to avoid getting scratched although technically it is still protected with the bezel but you can never be so sure this is another uh, plastic part this part should go in here basically just to fill in the gap or just to protect this sensor there's a lot of tiny holes in there so that is where all this uh, air will goes into or this air molecules goes into there 
and connect uh, sorry I'll probably touch or hit the uh, atmospheric pressure sensor and then the sensor will calculate that and show you guys the atmospheric uh, pressure value in your environment so this is uh, one of the reason why this triple sensor or any models at all that has this type of uh, atmospheric pressure sensor not suitable to be used as a diving watch water could literally penetrate through all of these uh, holes and get into the module if you use this for diving probably at a certain depth it is locked with just two screw which is incredibly uh, solid so let me remove that like so and you'll have these two metal parts first being this guy with all those uh, holes mesh holes see through and there's another one at the back just to protect that even further here it is and at the bottom of it you'll have this some sort of o-ring to avoid from water getting into the module i could try to remove this but there you go here it is and that at the back is the atmospheric pressure sensor which is literally the same thing being used in this 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 and even on the new gps rangement model Now I'm just done removing the screws on the back plate, so let's have a look what's inside. There you go. So this is how the GW-9400 series rangeman interior looks like, which is I believe not a huge surprise, especially if you are already a old time user of this model, but if you haven't, this is it. And one thing that I need to point out is that you can see that there's a wall around here, a lot of dust of course which shows that dust could still get into this part even though it is locked all the way to the side over there anyway this is how it looks like this is the piezoelectric speaker and this two gold part over here will tell the watch or disconnect the circuit between these two gold spring and tells the watch that someone already opened the back plate and thus the watch will show you open let me try to show you guys there it is open right things over there and when this thing happens, you cannot operate the button at all. A lot of dust, so I'm going to clean this up. And let's have a look even further. You'll see that a lot of this metal part, this, this thing over here, will hold this cushion into place. Well, it didn't do as much in my opinion. It's just there, just to hold everything into place. I can just take this back cushion out. Really elastic and sign of high quality as well. So that's good, right? And you'll see uh, this two gold spring again. This is the piezoelectric speaker spring and a CTL1616 battery, which is the same battery that is powering this, 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 and even that as well. And let's uh, study the interior. We'll have a Casio Thailand sign on top of this part over. Let me show you guys. There you go. And this will be the wave scepter antenna for the multiband 6 function. And this is the ribbon that connects to this. Uh, atmospheric pressure sensor on the side which could be taken out by unclip this white part right there like so and then if you slowly shake this connector out it could came out like so there you go and all you need to do now is just press thing out a little bit and take a pair of tweezers and pull this out. There you go. So this is how the atmospheric pressure sensor look like up close. Let me try to zoom in. And this is what gives this watch the uh, ability to predict the weather and also your elevations. Pretty cool, right? This tiny little guy could save your life, literally, if you know how to use it. Let's zoom back out. So since I already removed the uh, sensor, I could now pry this engine out, or this whole module out. And there you go. So let me take this thing over here. And next thing, I believe we could remove this faceplate as well. There you go. Seems like it has two parts. This part is a uh, resin or hard plastic. This one is aluminum some sort pretty cool right that's how it looks like on the back so we have this o-ring which didn't have an o-shape at all there you go pretty weird one but yeah a lot of dust on, on top of that already so i'm gonna have to clean this up this and this entire piece obviously 
and you'll see that the buttons does came in this uh, C clip in there which is similar to most watches except for this sensor button which does feature ones like on the triple sensor mod master like you're seeing at the back over there so there you go right that's how it looks like from the inside you'll have one two three four five six buttons all of them are just the same except for this light button where it came in ip plated to black and it goes all the way to the shaft in there i'm not sure if you can see it. and there you go right so that is all that you can see on this hard case of this range man watch and that's the solar panels there you go and now let's have a look at this part oh yeah i have to show you guys one more thing this is gold spring this will connect to those two black spot let me show you guys there down there two of them and thus charge up the watch usually a solar uh, equipped model will have this two spring located at this bottom layer in this case on the side so there's something uh, different and unique and overall this uh engine this watch is elf it's just <laughs> really really slim one you know what how about uh, we made a size comparison there you go this is the actual uh, thickness of the watch this is the actual watch look at how small this thing is and compared to the actual size so in a way if Casio were to small size or downsize their uh, future range man model they could easily do that no problem at all and there we are we'll have a small size triple sensor range man in the future without any issues at all they could just do that because the engine itself is just <laughs> really really small I believe I could turn on the LED. There you go. Since I left the auto light on, you can see the LED light close from that direction over there. And let's have a look how it looks like. All right, here we are. As you guys could see just now, you'll notice that the circuit board is actually clipped on each corner, which is surprisingly different compared to other models on the market that I disassembled before. This is the two gold spring that connect to the solar panel. And there are two smaller ones over here to connect to the LED light of two for one LED. And since this watch has two LED, another two will be over here. So this is incredibly small and guys don't lose this now i'm gonna need to take this i believe to be a disperse uh plate to the disperse the led light even better throughout the entire display uh panel there you go and let me put this thing over here take this display panel out first like that so this is the display panel compartment with the led light being in there so it is connected with this two plate down there looking at how thin it is i believe that is why the led light on this watch appear to be quite uneven and now this is the display panel which looked to me more like a dark blue than it is actually black and this is uh, it has a glass mirror light finish at the back with this this connector over here basically a simple display panel like you'll see on most g-shock watch so there are really nothing uh, much of a surprise going on now let's have a look at this circuit board oh seems like we have one more thing a white layer to i believe to disperse the led light even better with black tape i don't know why that thing is supposed to be there so yeah probably just to fill in some gap but well there you go a white background probably this is where you're gonna add a backlighting logo and you'll have what is this what the heck is this some sort of tape 
yeah let's just add a tape over there just to cover this component on this side and the rest are just very much basics display panel connector all goes to this processing unit at the center and you'll have one more layer at the back with some components and they are they look really really simple though when you look at all this even though this watch could do a really really cool functions the interiors quite, quite simple okay this is the battery compartment which uh, shouldn't be a huge surprise anymore and there's two gold spring just now and this is the piezoelectric speaker spring which goes over there I'm just gonna add this thing at the back and this is the plate again with Casio Thailand AC operation will be performed down there with the arrow pointing downwards and there you go this is all the things that made your GW-9400 Rangeman G-Shock watch works if you have any issues at all with your watch might be caused by just any one of these tiny little parts in your Rangeman so I hope this video will be coming handy to you if you are looking for spray parts or just uh, some troubleshooting with your Rangeman there you go and don't forget to check my latest Ranger merchandise design as well on my website purchase them to support the channel even further so that i can unbox or do this type of videos a lot more often and quicker as well in the future other than that thank you very much for watching this is gi chef and i'm out